In part two of map design, we get into some of the details of graphic variables and symbolization. You'll get to see examples that illustrate the principles at play in this section of the course. We left off at the last uh, file looking at this diagram, which has to do with symbolization and display primitives that we use in uh, applying graphic design principles uh, to mapping. We'll see examples then in the coming slides of the various ways in which we use these primitives as we make maps. First is the concept of hue. Hue is the basic color, and value is the amount of black in the color. For example, here we see saturated color ramps ranging from a pure hue, this is green, all the way to gray or black. We can use a color wheel uh, to differentiate graphic features. So three or four colors equally spaced around the wheel are good choices for differentiating graphic features. So you might want to use this to show differences among different areas or features on a map. Graphic design principles are applied to cartography, first of all, uh, using light versus dark colors, using the concept of contrast, and using graphic hierarchies. Light versus dark, dark colors. A high color value, a dark color, is perceived as more important uh, when mapping, and typically we will use a dark color then to represent greater quantity. Here's the use of contrast. The greater the difference in value between an object and its background, the greater the contrast. If you keep the background light and use lots of contrast, you can then bring out important features. Here's a good example of a bad map. It doesn't have enough contrast. Contrast is needed in order to distinguish features. So in this case, we have a hard time distinguishing the data that's being shown here. This is supposed to be a map of U.S. counties age 65 and up. And simply because of the way this map is designed in terms of the use of color, uh, it's not effective at, at, at communicating a message. Here's a much better map. This map has more contrast. And you can see that the color selection clearly shows a pattern of areas around the United States where you see a large clustering of counties with high populations over the age of 65. Graphic hierarchy is where bright colors are assigned to important graphic elements. These are called features. Important features are known as figure in graphic design. You can assign drab colors to the graphic elements that provide orientation or context. Contextual features are known as ground. In chapter two, you'll be doing a map where you create ground features and you put the features uh, that are the ground features into, into a position in the map where uh, they're less noticeable. And then you can notice what you want to bring out in terms of the data by using brighter colors or darker colors to make those, uh, those features stand out. Here is an example of a bad map on the left and a better map on the right. The bad map on the left you, has ground features uh, that take up too much prominence on the map, whereas the streets are made into ground features on the good map over on the right. The point of this map is to map out crime. So the good map on the right shows the crime incidents uh, much clearer than the one on the left. We use graphic hierarchy by placing a strong boundary, such as a heavy black line, around points or polygons that are important. So we really want them to stand out if they have that, if they have that outline. You can also use a coarse, heavy crosshatch or pattern to make polygons important and place or place them in figure. An overarching principle, this relates to Edward Tufte, author of the classic series of, of books on graphic design called Minimize Inc. Use lots of white space and make every pixel count. Elements you can and should delete are chart, chart junk. Here's a map full of chart junk. It's very difficult to interpret the meaning of this map. You've got populations, you've got uh, lots of different cities and counties are shown as well, and it's very hard to make sense of it. Here's a much better map. You could say this is at least a middling map, if not a good map. Here the chart map, the chart junk is gone. And the, the county boundaries have been symbolized in ground and the populations have been pulled out in figure. It's also not attempting to symbolize more than one category of data or themes at a time. 
Symbolizing points, we have four different ways to do this. Undifferentiated points, unique values, size graduated, or industry specific point markers. Here are undifferentiated points. Here are unique values uh, that have been assigned to points. So in other words, we're categorizing these. They've been classified into burglaries or drug deals. Each one is assigned a different symbol. Size graduated point markers are used uh, for magnitude at points. In other words, more means bigger, bigger means more. And so we can see here crime count by address. You've got a large number in some places, less in others. We can also use industry specific point markers. This works well when you have a map that is at a scale where you could make out the point marker itself. For example, over here, these are point markers for schools, the one on the left. Another use of industry specific point markers, in this case, crime is the industry, and we have here weapons, burglaries, and narcotics, and recognizable symbols that communicate those particular categories. The next section deals with displaying lines. By lines, we don't mean line in the vector world of ArcGIS data. We mean any kind of line on a map that would be recognized as a normal person, not a GIS person, not an abnormal person, but as a line on the map, not a vector data object. In other words, it may pertain to something we would display as a line, like a roadway, uh, or it could be a line that we would use as a boundary around a polygon. We can display lines as ground features, and then we want to determine the importance of lines for the map. There are also our industry standards we have to think about when we depict lines in certain ways. For analytical maps, most lines are ground features and should be light shades of gray or light brown. In this example here, you can see a section of downtown Pittsburgh with Point Park uh, there at the edge of the triangle. Um, at, at, across the uh, the river from the football stadium and you can kind of see there that the streets are in ground. So in this case uh, you basically are, are, are seeing a map that's uh, that has roadways on it and it's using symbol recognized symbol types for roads. And then this is an interesting aspect of lines in terms of the way that they relate to polygons. So we use a graphic element of a line around a polygon if we want to really emphasize the polygon. In the case of the map on the left, you can see there that the, uh, the, the, the blocks in central Pittsburgh, uh, or if these, are, these may be buildings, um, that they're shown with a, with a boundary around them. It actually makes it somewhat difficult to interpret that map compared to the one on the right, which looks much less busy. And that concludes the slides for part two of the map design section.